So let me start Hi. recording. Yeah, now the, I started recording. So what is Hadoop? Hadoop is Hadoop is Java based. Hadoop is Java based open source framework, which will store huge amount of the data, and the same data will be processed efficiently. What is Hadoop? Hadoop is a Java based open source framework, which will store huge data. And process the same data efficiently. Compare with, compare with an existing system or a traditional system. Now, try to understand what is the traditional system. What is the traditional system? What is our traditional system? Ideally, RDBMS. RDBMS. Okay. Guys, I would like to tell you one more point before getting into this. Hadoop is not a replacement for RDBMS. Hadoop is not a replacement for RDBMS. RDBMS has its own advantages as well as Hadoop has its own advantages. Okay, let's try to understand how the traditional approach is working. Then what? why we need Hadoop? Why we need Hadoop? So, the RDBMS or our traditional approach works such a way that it will be collecting the data from the different sources. The sources can be our financial institute or your social media or it can be a sensors or it can be our satellite or it can be our mobile or it can be our mobile or it can be our CRM or ERP applications or it can be anything. These are called sources. These are called sources. Sources means from where we are getting the data. Source means from where we are getting the data. We are getting the data from here, different sources. Guys, it doesn't mean that all Hadoop applications or all the traditional applications will have a different sources. It can be a single source or it can be multiple source. Okay. All these sources will give you a data, will produce a data. They will produce a data. What type of data they will produce? What are the data they are giving? What is the data? What do you call the data? We will call that raw data. We will call them raw data. Why we are calling is a raw data? Because the data directly coming from the source for a further analytics or for further process. It is not gone through any process. It is not gone through any process. The data can be in it can be in a formatted way or data can be in a duplicated data or data can be in hexadecimal format or data can be different kind of format which you need which will contain necessary things as well as unnecessary things which will contain necessary details as well as unnecessary details from this data I won't get the necessary details only then what I need to do I need to go through some process called some process called ETL some process called ETL what is ETL ETL means extract transformations transformations and load into load into a system where the data will store in the form of table format before loading into that you can apply normal form normalization normalization you can apply normalization we are getting the data from the raw zone we are getting the data from the raw zone or we can call it as a RAS, the sources we are getting the raw data that raw data we are sending through some application or some ETL process. This process is called ETL process extract transfer and load. What extract? Extract the valuable information. Apply some transformation on top of it and load the data the final result into some place where it can appear in the form of tables. It can be your database. It can be your data warehouse system. It can be a database or it can be a data warehouse system. Now what are the ETL tools are available in the market apart from Hadoop? 
there are so many tool tools there are some tools as given by Arkil there are some tools like Informatica there are some tools called Abinitio there are some tools like uh, talent there are so many tools there are so many tools using those tools we will process this data we will load into RDBMS once we load into RDBMS once we load into RDBMS our, our data warehouse system we will connect to we will connect to a reporting system we will connect to a reporting system we will connect to a reporting system where my client or where my client will be running or may, where my reporting tool will be running from here whatever the analytics I want to generate I where whatever the analytics I want to see I will see from this system so I'll the system will generate a reports reports who will use these reports your business analyst or your business users business clients or data warehouse system administrators data warehouse system administrator these guys will be using these reports to take a business decisions let's take a simple example guys let's take a simple example I have Amazon data I have some Amazon data this the Amazon data is last six months data this is last six months data from this data from this data I want to understand I want to understand how many new registrations new registrations how many people purchased mobile how many people purchased books how many people purchased home appliance and what is the, the sales I want to understand the business then I will take a business decision like providing a promotions or providing some offers or providing some something else based on the season I want to do that I want to see that or what was the sales last year from last year when the season is coming let's assume that from South India it is festival season like a Pongal is a very big season right so last one year in a South India what is the more sales based on that okay this season these products are buying more so let's give some discount on it or let's start some promotion on it okay so they will take the such kind of decisions how we will come to know from this raw data how will I come to know how many new registrations how many mobiles how many books how will I come to know this so the data will be going going through this ETL process then they'll apply some transmissions and they will load into a data warehouse system where we'll be having some application will be running here this application like our reporting tool okay where you have a dashboard well you will be dashboard is nothing but some application guys so where uh, sorry guys someone is talking I have one question Shushil uh, yeah yeah, I have one question like see uh, as a I'm an application developer I know that the, most of the application is developed and data is stored in the database in the form in the RDBMS databases mm. so for any kind of report that we want we mm. normally write a procedure or make file a query mm. and we generate it into the Excel or on the screen correct so I don't understand I don't understand why this like from, if Amazon is uh, selling a mobile or any product so you know all the details would be stored in the database mm -hmm. so, uh, why this need, need of ETL then it's very already good. there in the database very good question uh, uh, Shesh uh, Kamal okay uh, can I call you Kamal okay the question is that yeah. the what the uh, Kamal is asking the question is that anyway the mobiles registration booking all this information will be loaded into RDBMS already it's there in the database then why we need all this ETL then why we need to do that so uh, nice question Kamal the Kamal you are talking about only one source right your yeah. Amazon maybe access through a mobile maybe retailing maybe uh, some like there are some different sources where the data is coming right or they want to mm -hmm. know what they're talking about their product in the social media 
right? They want to okay. understand all this kind of data. The data comes, as I said, is come is really good. Uh, right answer. Uh, the question was really good. The question is when you are doing a OLTP, online transactional process, OLTP. But here we are talking mm -hmm. about OLAP, online transaction analytics process. We are talking about analytics. To do analytics, I need to process the data which has the necessary information, unnecessary information. I don't want to take unnecessary information. I need to take unnecessary details. Right? So the, the example what I have taken here, I want to make you understand how the analytics works. What is the analytics? That's why I have, to have taken Amazon as example. Clear? Okay, yeah. So after the data will go through here and process and stored in RDBMS. Let's say my data was 50 GB. This is my data center. This data center is there in, this is my data center. This data center is there in Singapore. Let's take an example. My, this data center is there in Singapore. I'm querying from my, I'm querying from my India. I mean, I'm querying from India. I want to see a report of all this last one year. What is the sales of this? What is the sales of this? What is the sales of this? I want to understand that. This data, once the process and after processing the data is the 50 GB data. This 50 GB data is there in the, is there in the, your data center. Then the data has to come to your process engine or a processing, a process engine. Here, when I select the range, I'll be having a categories and all those things, guys, in the in the dashboard. As soon as I click on the submit button, it will generate some query because the query has to fire on your database, right? It will generate some query. Let's say select. Why I have taken select? Because it's, I'm going to fetch the data. I'm not going to modify. I'm not going to insert the data. Whatever the data is available, I'm fetching the data. So then, this data, this query is expecting some data. This query is expecting some data. So the data has to travel from here, from my Sing Singapore to India. Okay, so it has to catch some flight and it has to travel to India, right? The flight is nothing but here, your network. Okay, so how does it matter, sir? I'm connecting to my server. I am in the same network. How real it's matter? Very good question, it's no matter. You are in the same network, but transferring your data from your data center to your process engine will it take some time? Will it take will it take some time? Let's assume that it has taken two minutes. It has taken two minutes to travel 50 GB data. What sir? What you are talking? Can it be possible? It will be possible in the less less time also. Okay, I'll tell you that. I'll show you the example. The data has to travel from there and the data will get processed where the data get processed and which memory there are each each electronic or uh, each device will have a two type of memories one is a primary memory another one is secondary memory like you have a RAM and ROM right so the process will go always in the RAM right so it will load the data into disk initially, then it will fetch the data into RAM, then it will apply your logic into this RAM. Correct? It means your process engine should have a better processor, better processor to generate a report in a given time. We'll talk about that more. Now the data started processing. To apply this logic to generate the report, let's assume that another, it has taken two minutes. Total how many minutes guys? Four minutes. To generate the report, to see the report, I have to wait four minutes. Will, will a client will wait to generate a report? I mean, he clicked on the button, he's waiting. Any client will wait for, to see a report in four minutes. Four minutes is very heavy, uh, very, uh, you know, huge time. But I'm just taking an example. No one, no one will wait to see no one will no one will see no one will wait for you uh, know four minutes to see a report i clicked on the enter button I, just, I want to see a report in seconds even my client is given a benchmark is five seconds 
he won the report in five seconds where we are not able to achieve as of now we're still doing some code optimization here and there so I want to see a report in five seconds I clicked on the button submit button zoom you should show them show me a report you should show me a, a report that's the client expectation why it is taking four minutes of time why where we are lag behind where we are why it is taking four minutes of time okay this approach was that's the question okay that's the question why why it is taking this much time that's the question now try to come back uh, try to uh, understand a second like it was working very well this design was designed a decades before this design was designed a decades before where it was working well excellent design no doubt about it it is a, the number one design then why it is failing then why it is taking why my clients are not liking it what is the reason behind it why it is started you know uh, 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 say the clients are rejecting our clients are you know uh, uh, what to say it's not happy with this current design because no client none of the client is ready to wait to see a report it is started giving you some limitations it started giving you some limitations guys very simple this design has been designed a decades before where the data was very less those days the data was very less it means if you if you if you take an example if you take worldwide data what are the data is there till today if you take a hundred percentage if you take a hundred percentage 90 to 95 percent of the data has been generated last three to four years last three to four years let's drop the five percent only has been collected from long years 95 percent of the data has been generated very few years it means we are we are living with a huge data we are living with a huge data where the every day the data is getting generated so much of data your mobile your car your your i mean if you if you take if you are taking any uh, services like stocks your banking system your financial uh, financial institutes like your social media everyone started collecting the so much of data right so with that data your system is started giving you some limitations what is that limitations what is that limitations let's look at guys when the data is grown when the data is grown when the data is grown I need to invest some amount of money in the ETL I need to buy a better ETL tools I need to buy a better ETL tools right number one is cost the second limitation okay so I have invested some amount of money in the details then my existing data storage I need to improve my storage as well the data storage I need to improve data storage as well I need to invest money, money as well here what is the first limitation guys so I'll be stop I'll be taking another 10 to 15 minutes I'll be stopping you guys so we'll be continuing tomorrow because today the first half an hour we started discussing what is agenda of today so we'll be continuing after 15 minutes uh, I'll be stopping after 15 minutes the very first limitation is cost involved when the data is grown the cost involved second one the data is storing in a data warehouse system it is started when I query the data started traveling towards my logic my logic is this my data is started traveling towards my logic it means we are downloading the data you are moving the data you are moving the data from one location to another location even though if you have a better bandwidth the huge bandwidth you started moving data from one disk to another disk which is take more time instead of that you tell to your system data you be here only you don't move my logic will come guys it's very simple how how big will be your logic how big will be your logic hardly underlines 200 lines thousand lines maybe thousand lines of code you have written what will be the size of your thousand lines code what will be a thousand lines of code size in a kbs 
it will be in kbs let's assume that you have 1 mb data or 1 mb code 1 mb code so is it good to download 50 gb data or is it good to send your 1 mb data or 1 mb logic towards the data and process here and get take the results which is easy which one is easy downloading your data towards your logic is easy or uploading your logic towards data is easy uploading the logic right so it means we are losing something here what is that that's called data localization we will do what we are missing data localization what is data localization I like to have a simple uh, example here in a weekend let's take a weekend we'll be going for uh, to buy a house needs like a groceries and all those things right to buy a grocery we will plan in the morning at nine o'clock let's assume that then you will travel towards your store in the traffic an half an hour you travel you went to a store then you'll choose your items and we'll spend one hour or one and a half hour there and we'll come back and we'll go to a queue for the building a building you'll be seeing a very big queue because we are living in IT so there will be so many people not only IT guys in the weekend not on, the weekend means most of the IT people will get a free time so they will start spending their time for this kind of things so, so you'll be seeing a long queue at the building counter you have to spend another 10 to 15 minutes there come back while you are back again the same traffic you have to reach almost you are spending to get a grocery off of the day like four hours instead of that stay at your home pick up your phone call the store order whatever you want and start watching your favorite channel or your favorite um, movie whatever it is after one hour the 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 whatever you have ordered the items get delivered that is called customer local what is that that's called customer local you didn't waste your time you are spending your time with your family you are spending your time to by watching your TV or cricket whatever it is and you have saved a lot of energy correct so what does it mean that is called the customer localization the same concept here as well data localize don't move your data don't move your data towards your competition move your competition towards data move your competition towards data what does it mean what does it mean so here this example instead of downloading this 50 GB data upload your 1 MB data towards your logic uh, towards your data and get the results and get the results that is the Call, that is called data localization wherever the data is there you go and process it what if it if I do that what will happen I will save time I don't need to download right I don't need to download two minutes I saved the downloading time I saved so the processing time two minutes okay now it was four minutes before now I saved to two minutes right the second limitation is time why time why it is taking this much time why it is taking two minutes why can't it be because the existing system is not distributed what is a distributed what does it mean distributed means distributing the data into multiple machines into multiple machines if you distribute the data into multiple machines if you distribute the data into multiple machines they can process parallelly they can process parallelly so when they start processing parallelly the, da the data will get processed very quickly and you will save a lot of time you will save a lot of time so the third limitation was the third limitation is data localization so we don't have a no data localization and the fourth one is no distribution no distributed it means no parallel process no parallel process no parallel process another question now okay fine I agree with it now I have sent a request for the processing some data this mission is failed this mission is failed 
do I have? So when I when I sent a request, the the source the the who is providing your service that machine is failed. Is your request will fail or success? The re, the request whatever you have made will it fail or success? It will also fail. It will also fail because I don't have a mechanism saying that oh if this machine is not there you go and get from other machine. That kind of thing is not there. Let's take a simple example. Let's go back college days. So you didn't go to one day class. Okay. The next day you thought to go to your friend home to get a book. You thought to get a you thought to get a book from your home. I mean your friend home. So then you went to your friend home. The friend is not available. Friend is not available. So you have to come back, right? Let's assume that other case. Someone is there. Let's say your friend mom, your auntie. Auntie said, "Okay, so he is not here. He is there in another friend house. That guy also your friend only. Let's say that guy also your friend only. Then you go and get, go and collect there. Then you move to other friend. Instead of coming back to home, you move to other friend to get a book. It means it has been redirected. But your request is not still failed, right? You went there. He is not available. Fine, not a problem. I'll go and get from some other place. It means you have a fault to tolerance." You have something called fault to tolerance, but with the existing traditional system, we do not have automatic fault to tolerance. We do not have automatic fault to tolerance. No auto fault to tolerant. Okay, no duplication, no distribution, no automatic fault tolerant. Under scaling, let's say today my data is grown. It's not scaling is not easy. Scaling is not easy. Let's assume that you thought to upgrade your system. You have to stop the service. You have to stop the service. More maintenance. You have to stop the service. No parallel process. No auto fault tolerant. Scaling is not easy, right? Actually, it's a single point of failure. I think someone was trying to talk. Go ahead, guys. If any doubt. Go ahead, guys. Okay, it seems there's no doubt. Let's go back. Okay, so are you guys clear till this point? Any doubt? Any doubt? Srinu, Aparna. I mean, I'm randomly picking the names: Partha, Nagi, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Arvind, Anusha. Mm -hmm. Any doubts? And others who join? Yeah, I have a question. Linga, could you could you please repeat? Uh, uh, if uh, my produce and spark, right? So my produce, if that's too slow, why are the companies still using my produce or spark? Very good question, uh, Linga. Uh, because of legacy. So because of dependency and also most of the companies now is migrating. I will I'll, I'll tell you why it is. So when we come to that point, I'll really explain when I'm when I'm explaining the difference between the MapReduce and uh, your Spark, I'll tell you why it is. Whatever we have discussed till now about this architecture and all. So any doubts in that? Hello. Yeah, hello. Tell me. Uh, Ravi, can you please explain about the scaling part? I'll explain the scaling. The last part. point. I'll explain the uh, yeah scaling part. I'll explain. So, any other doubt apart from that? Yeah, tell me, Sudarshan. Yeah, hello, Ravi. Yeah, could you please explain fault tolerance also? Hello. Hmm. Could you please explain part and all the Okay. Uh, guys, the question is that how really technically how the data quality working in the or how do or wherever it is where we have a network, right? So we need to face the data from some other place to process it. Very good question, Sudarshan. Your question 
so uh, we will when when I show you the different architecture from here different architecture you will easily understand that okay so uh, I will explain that when I'm going when I'm going to explain you HDFS architecture it's very easy you know let me put in the I mean let me give you a clue Hadoop is a distributed environment distributed environment and the data will be loaded into multiple machines and the data will be processed in the same machines the data will be processed in the same machines wherever the data is loaded okay the process is not separated with your data as simple as that I'll show you that in the next uh, architecture you will easily understand that yeah go ahead Go ahead, Sudarshan. Any other question? Yep. Anyone else, guys? Okay. So it's already 10:15. So these are the limitations we have seen. Why we see the limitations? Why we saw the limitation? Ravi, you only said this architecture is super. It was the number one. Then all of a sudden you shown me some limitations. Why? Because the data is grown. The data is grown. The the grown data we call as a big data. What is that, guys? It is a big data. What is a big data? Anyone? What is a big data? I'll just introduce a big data, then I'll move. We'll take off. Uh, the data beyond the storage Ravi, capability. Ravi, it's the the data which is uh, not. Handled by the normal RDBMS, we call it as a big data. Very good question, guys. I ex very really appreciate it. Very nice answer. So I expected some people will say terabytes of data, petabytes of the data. No, the data which is not able to process by existing system in given time, in given time. Let's say I want the report in five seconds. If any of the system is failing to give me a report in five seconds, that data is a big data. No matter how big it is no matter how big it is it can be 1 gb 10 gb 100 gb or 1 tb 1 pay whatever so 1 zettabytes or exabytes no matter at all right big data means huge amount of the data huge amount of the data which cannot able to process by process store and process by existing system or a traditional system that data will call a big data okay uh, immediate next question guys can i say 100 mb is a big data It's depend on the no. system hardware no. we are using. No. So whoever say no, could you please give me explanation why why can't I say 100 MB is the big data? Uh, guys, uh, please please bear with me. If uh, anyone is uh, not talking, please keep yourself on unmute. Please. Okay. Why can't I say 100 MB is a big data? So, if you have an RV capacity to handle this data, then we can we can say that this is not a big data. And if you can't handle this 100 MB with your existing hardware, then we can call it as a big data. Very good, right? So if any application or if any system is not able to handle this 100 MB data, yes, really, it's 100 MB big data. 100 MB is a big data for the specific machine. Let's take our email applications, guys. We cannot send 100 MB as an an email. 100 MB as an email for that email application. 100 MB is a big data. Okay, okay. We will be talking the rest of the things tomorrow, same time, 9 to 10. Please log on. Uh, now, uh, if you guys have any doubts, please stay back, and we'll have a discussion one to one. Or otherwise, we can leave for the day. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. Have a great, wonderful night or evening.